So that's the pot that I have them in with the chives and the parsley. So hopefully um, next year I am going to bring them out and I'm going to hopefully put them in a bigger pot um, and see if they will draw the swallowtails more than having them in the ground like I did this, this year. So I'm going to put a few of these videos together. Um, I just showed you about the chives and the parsley um, and my other caterpillars, the sphinx that I had found um, and he, I showed you a video earlier with him burrowing in the dirt. Um, so we're going to keep him over winter along with the woolly bear and my um, luna moths never hatched. They're still in their cocoons. We only had that one hatch. So I'm going to do a little video for you guys of showing you what all I have and what I will keep over the winter. We do have one chrysalis left um, for the monarchs and I'm hoping within the next week it will hatch so I can let it go because all of our leaves up here in western New York are changing and it is getting you know cooler. So let me turn this around and I will show you the sphinx um, caterpillar which he is already making his um, cocoon um, inside the dirt. So here he is. I'm not going to move any more of the dirt around him because I don't want to disturb him. Um, but you can see there a close-up of him. And then in the springtime he will hatch and hopefully I can let him go as a moth. And this is our last um, chrysalis for the monarch caterpillar that I have. Like I said, hopefully within the next week it'll hatch and we can let the butterfly go so we can head south. So this is the cage that I have um, the woolly bear in. And I put a bunch of stuff in there for him to hibernate underneath. And I had seen him earlier underneath this bark. And yep, there he is. So he'll be in here hibernating all winter. And this is where I still have all my uh, Luna cocoons. Um, I put a bunch of, they're just hosta leaves to kind of maybe protect them over the winter a little bit more. But there I have all of them. And I'm hoping that they will hatch next spring. Might put a couple more leaves over top so they stay nice and nice and safe there. I almost forgot, also in this cage with the woolly bear, I have still the chrysalis right up here. That is the swallowtail. And it did not hatch this year, so it will probably stay in that chrysalis over winter, and we'll be letting that go. So we've got Luna Moths, the Swallowtail, the Woolly Bear, and then the Sphinx. And then within a, a week, we'll be letting go the last Monarch Butterfly. So that the, that's what we have. Okay, so I'm back here in the corner um, where I'm going to plant some different types of milkweed. Um, I'm going to plant some in the fall time here and I'm going to keep some seeds in the summer or for the springtime and plant some in the spring um, and hopefully I will have some new different kinds of milkweed um, to have planted. Um, let me flip this around and I will show you my flower bed. So this is it. It was pretty dry, so I ended up um, shoveling a lot of it up and dumping quite a bit of water on it a couple days ago. I let it settle down, so I'm going to plant some of my seeds and then I'm going to put some fresh soil on top. Hopefully the seeds will sink down into the ground so the squirrels and the, and the birds don't eat them. And then again in the springtime I'm going to try and plant some more. I have four different milkweeds I'm going to plant. The ones that I already have is the common milkweed, but I'm going to um, plant a little bit more of that. Um, I have the butterfly milkweed, the blood flower, 
and the showy milkweed. Um, and then I just used popsicle sticks and put the names of them on and I'm just gonna, I clear coated them and I'm just gonna put those near the seeds where I plant them. That way I know about which kind and where I did plant them in my flower bed. Okay, so I got all my milkweed um, seeds planted. Um, I'll come up close here. Over there I planted my common. Back there is the showy. Right in here is the blood flower. And then over there in that corner is the butterfly. And that's right, that bush right there is my um, bee balm. So hopefully we'll have all of these come up in the springtime. And I'll have to show you then in the spring what it looks like. Okay, so these are the four milkweeds that I planted. And I wanted to show you the seeds. They pretty much look the same. Um, except for I think the blood flower milkweed seeds look a little bit darker. Let me see if I can get a closer look at them. Those are the blood flower milkweed. And then we have the milkweed butterfly milkweed seeds. And then we've got the milkweed showy seeds. They're a little bit lighter, but they all have the same look and texture. And then the milkweed common. That's what they all look like. And I'll show you the pictures again, what they look like. The There's the common milkweed. The milkweed showy. the milkweed butterfly and the blood flower. So like I said, I have had the milkweed common, but we'll see in the springtime what all these ones look like. Hope I'm hoping they all come up and I'll do a video in the springtime. 